Howdy there, beautiful people. It's the Real Estate Cowboy. Chili's in the truck because we're right off Route 11 down here in Newfield, Maine. This is a paved, maintained, year-round road. Obviously, power above us here. We are right on the Newfield, Maine town line where we're going to go check out this badass 96-acre hunting property with the possibilities of a really great year-round house to go out here. A um, couple quick things. We are in York County, so we're in southern Maine. We're about two hours away from Boston, hour and a half away from Concord, New Hampshire, which is the capital. You're about an hour from Portland, Maine, the ocean, the international airport, everything over there. So really great location down here in southern Maine, our southern furthest county that we have. 96 acres, 1,800 plus feet of water frontage on the Little Ossipee River, accessible to everywhere and anything paved, maintained, year-round road. And if you follow me, you can kind of see how private and quiet uh, this driveway is down here. We got a gated uh, dirt road driveway in great shape. Could easily take a car down here. Um, no problem at all if you wanted to drive the Prius up. So you can see the gate here. We're actually a really hidden driveway, pretty hard to even see it. This driveway is actually about a quarter mile off of Route 11 here, so super private. The power runs all the way back here, um, so you can really let your imagination fly. But right now, the current owners have been using this as a hunting property, coming up, spending family time. It's been in their family for a couple generations now, but uh, you can see some of these old stone walls that are lining some of the property. We've got some really big, mature hardwood maple oak that's out here. Um, but overall, we'll show you the soil. Really sandy, really great for growing big pine trees right now. You can see this little hardwood knoll right behind me it is a beautiful little area. But when we get further back, the sand beco or becomes a little sandier. Really good for growing big pine trees. And so let's jump on in the truck. We'll show you what the driveway's like and uh, we'll get on over to the camp and start showing you around. And then we'll dive into the land and have a heck of a day out here. All right, folks, we just made it down the driveway. As you saw, nice sandy driveway, power running down here the entire way. You got about a quarter mile of power poles and lines coming out here. Um, the place was built back in the 60s. It's been in the same family for a couple generations now. In today's world, running power this far is probably about twenty-five to $30,000 minimum. So to have that sort of resource already, you know, this far off of the road for your privacy is huge. Um, if you kind of look over here to my left side, I guess your right, you can see the, the old dug well here that's been here for just as long. Never had any problems with it, never had any bad tests. The water runs perfect, it's clear as day, so that's great. We do have a septic system on site here as well. It is uh, feeding two full bathrooms, one inside the cabin here, which is about, you know, let's call it 350, maybe 400 square feet of living, about two bedroom, kind of studio style kitchen, living room with a full bath in there. And then we have a uh, another full bath over here behind the little garage. Uh, the view out the back here, I'm not sure if you can see it too well on the camera or not, really beautiful view of the hills and mountains out front here. Um, one of the most unique parts about this property is that it directly abuts the Vernon S. Walker Wildlife Management Area, um, which is a public access or public usage um, conservation area that's about 5,600 acres, a little over 5,600 acres, where you can hunt, fish, snowmobile, ATV, I mean, do anything you want. So take your 96-acre property and attach it to 5,600 plus acres of conservation and public use land and you really have a phenomenal property here to do whatever you want. Uh, we'll talk a little bit more about that as we kind of move through here, but I'll just show you quickly, small little kind of storage shed, mini barn sort of thing, metal roof in good shape. Everything could probably use paint and some upkeep like that. I mean, you can see things are painting. The camp's, camp's been here since the 60s. We're not hiding that. Um, Come on inside, you can check everything out. We got a little lofted area here, so 
you know, if you wanted to store some of the things that you're just going to leave up here at camp and or the house, whatever way you're going to treat this place, because it obviously can be lived in full time. Um, plenty of space. I wouldn't call it a, you know, a car garage by any means. You know, you may be able to, you could fit a car, but definitely not fitting a truck. I'm 6'3". I'm touching the rafters. So we're looking at probably about seven foot ceilings. We got electric in here, a little concrete pad. So nice little storage shed and or one car garage for, you know, just a little sedan or something like that. So we just showed you the little barn here, um, sitting on a little, you know, elevated picnic kind of platform area to sit down and take in the views of Man Mountain, Sugarloaf Mountain, and a couple others that are out there. There's multiple Sugarloaf Mountains, so nobody get there, you know, Oh my God, it's not up north. It's not Sugarloaf. It is. There's a Sugarloaf over here. Um, so yeah, I mean, really beautiful layout. You can start to see this more sandier soil from, you know, holding more of the softwood trees and, and that sort of thing here, but could definitely, you know, put a little effort in, grow a little bit more grass, things of that nature. Um, and yeah, so let me get up off my resting spot. It's a little warm today, so taking her a little slower so I don't sweat all over camera for everybody to make fun of me. <laughs> One of the things you'll notice, the, the sellers did a really, really great job. We got outdoor water here with also, we got um, electric hookup and we have those around, uh, there's a couple different electric and water hookups here. So essentially the sellers developed like a little mini campground. Um, so if somebody wanted to bring up their RV, come hunting for the weekend, stay for a week, whatever people wanted to get into, they really set it up uh, for people to be able to come and really enjoy. So you could plug in your RV, you could have power, you could have water, and then come on over with me. For everybody that's living kind of outside the cabin here, it's just like being in the old... Uh, Smokey the Bear, KUA sort of campground, you know? <laughs> but go ahead and take a look at that. It's actually a really great setup. I mean, it's uh, definitely a level above a uh, outdoor shower. Um, so that'll do the trick. If you're all muddy or you wanna wash a dog off or something like that, I'd probably recommend using this outdoor setup here, but it is plumbed, it has power hot water, the whole shebang. All right, so you just uh, got a look at the outside of the main cabin, the little barn, and then this outdoor second full bathroom here for all your RV guests or friends that come and stay out here. Um, I, I just talked about it, but I just wanted to point it out. So we have the main water line and electric uh, coming from right there. You kind of follow it out here into this field that is really nice and level, no problem being able to you know, park uh, RVs and host friends and have a little party, whatever you want to do. Um, but you'll see around here, I mean, where they've set this up, Chili, Chili just found one, but. So we got another, we have another electric box out here. We just have your, you know, traditional three plug plug-in. So, you know, you could string lights, you could run a vending machine if you wanted to, whatever you really want to do. Um, pretty fun actually to have that sort of setup out here. Um, another thing that they did with these kind of RV sites is that there are some gray water uh, systems out here. It's essentially, you know, like the big drums with some gravel in them and things like that. And it's just gray water. There's no septic out here for like the RV sites and things of that nature. But you can see, you know, everything's plugged up. You can have your water, you can drain your gray water and all that sort of stuff. And why don't you come over here, come a little bit closer. Let me show you something else that's really cool. I don't know if you can see it now, but the blueberries are starting to come in. Obviously our main staple here. A little first taste test of the year. Yep, mint. That's a main blueberry right there. Love it. Here's your kind of gray water drain system here for RVs or friends. Here is your dug well that is still very operational, still what's feeding um, the water around here. And I'll run the water for you when we get inside as well. Super clean, everything looks like it's going really well. The septic tank and leach field is all back here as well. This is all working uh, perfectly. You can see the electric overhead here. 
Um, and just a quick little number as well. We got about a thousand feet of road frontage up on Route 11 here where the driveway is. So you got a thousand feet of road frontage up there, quarter mile snaky driveway that comes out here to this little kind of elevated uh, landing platform that's looking out at the mountains and uh, the conservation area that this directly abuts as well. And uh, we'll go grab the keys once we get inside. There is a, a basement underneath here, not a full basement, but storage and where the hot water tank and all that sort of stuff is. So we'll get inside and then we'll come back out and we will show you what it looks like uh, in the little basement area here. But, um, you know, everybody's going to be like, oh my God, it's not worth $450,000. Look at that camp. Da, 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 da. All right. Well, for all you haters out there, go ahead and look up York County. Find me 96 acres of land something that has almost 2,000 feet of river frontage that abuts 5,600 acres of conservation with a quarter mile long driveway with power, with septic, with a well, the whole nine. I challenge you. So before you go and say it's not worth it, do your research. That's what I'm here for. All righty. We're headed into uh, the cabin here. You can see a uh, screened in porch sitting on a concrete slab, not slab, a uh, concrete foundation. Um, screens are all in pretty good condition, obviously painting, obviously some upkeep and things like that. Again, you know, this property is more so, more so the land and its layout than it is, you know, the condition of the cabin. But I'll show you when we get inside, it looks completely different than what some of you are, I'm sure, judging this place on right now. But Screened in porch, awesome to have in the summer. Chili's in here, loving it right now. He is hot. I'm sure you can hear him panting pretty heavily on camera, but we're working on it. And as you kind of come in here, you can see, you know, we got a light out here. Everything's nice and tight. Really great breeze coming from the little elevation that we're on. Alrighty, folks, come on in. As you can see, I mean, quite a bit different than what the outside presents itself as. We got really nice pine floors, walls, um, you know, a unfinished kind of ceiling to give you that rafters and stuff, a little bit more extra space. There's no insulation, it looks like, up in the ceiling here. So if you were looking at just trying to use this place as a year-round insulated um, spot, you know, you could do a couple small things to insulate the ceiling and stuff a little bit more and be able to have yourself out here no problems year round, but you can see more like a studio kind of living in a sense. We got kind of like this combo of the kitchen and a little bit of a living room area here, full fridge freezer. We got the oven, uh, the stove top. And over right here, um, got a big old uh, propane heater, you know, so that will definitely heat this entire place, no problem at all. Um, you can see some of the forced air vents. There's an oil burning furnace downstairs. Sellers haven't been up here really at all in the winter in quite a long time. So not too much information on the furnace and you know its condition, but we'll go show you that in the basement. Should be in decent shape, but they haven't ran it in a long time. They've, when they've come up, they've used the propane deal. Um, light switches for everything. You know, I keep thinking that there's no electric out here, but there is. And we got two bedrooms. Come on into the first one here. Got some nice little windows. A little twin bed set up in here. Could easily just be a queen room. But, you know, a little panel box is right there. Some decent little windows for some natural light. Simple little camp room. Can't really beat that. Alrighty, bedroom number one with the two twin beds you just saw. Bedroom number two right next door. Looks like it's got a queen size bed in here. You know, you could easily walk around both sides of it if you kind of had it centered, but it's a basic camp room. Walls are really freshly painted. Everything looks good in here. A lot of pine looking well. You got electric everywhere. You got your little kitchen table. I talked about the water, so I'll go ahead and let that run and show you guys that. Nice, clean, crystal clear. New field main water, Bob. So you saw the crystal clear water. I've drank it, Chili's drank it. Feels good to me. Um, main door, as we came in from the screen porch, is right here. If you walk this way, you'll see big storage area for, let's say, you know, cleaning supplies or just other bedding and stuff like that. Really big space, actually. 
go ahead and check that. And then you can come on into the full bathroom on the inside of the cabin here. So we're down in the basement here, uh, probably about six, five, six, six ceilings. Uh, you got the big oil tank behind you. You got the hot water heater here. Looking for a little date to see if it has anything for its age, but it looks relatively new to be honest with you. I don't see, don't see anything that's telling me year, but yeah, I mean, that looks like it's in great shape actually. So. Um, as you can see, mostly cinder block with a concrete kind of slab over everything. Um, here's your furnace that hasn't been used in a long time. Um, we can, I don't know if that works or not. We can see. And then they got a vertical water storage pressure tank right here that is apparently in good shape. So overall, you know, it's dry down here. Everything seems to be in pretty good shape. It goes into a crawl space a little, little bit over where the screen porch is. So everything's lifted up. Everything's really nice and dry. No rotting of any of these timbers or anything like that. Not seeing any mold anywhere. So it'll do. Good little storage spot and easy access to all your uh, kind of things you need to run this place. Let's get outside, go check out a little bit more of the land and we'll get down to the water and show you that as well. Alrighty, folks, we are a little bit uh, below the main cabin and property up there behind you. Uh, stopping really quick, nice little field kind of landing area when they did log the property in the last about 15 years or so. Um, but you can still see there's a lot of big pine. There's even a lot of mature hardwood still left on the property. Um, as we walk down towards the little Ossipee River and all your river frontage, I just wanted to point out a couple other things here too. Don't mind me, there's so many bodies of water around here, I just had to pull my phone out, make sure that I get them. Um, so within a 10 minute drive of here, we have Mirror Lake, we have Round Pond, Mud Pond, Man Pond, Shapley Pond, Smarts Pond, Hanson Pond, obviously the little Ossipee River, um, and there's a couple others. It looks like Spicer Pond as well, and more recreation. We, like I said, we have views of Man Mountain, Sugarloaf Mountain. There's also Gill Mountain, um, Bond Mountain, and a couple others right here um, in the immediate area. But when you're talking about recreation in Southern Maine, this is pretty much uh, your best option for you know having everything in one spot. I mean, if you're looking to hike, if you're looking to fish, if you're looking to hunt. If you're looking to snowmobile, ATV, if you're just looking for privacy, this thing really has it all. You know, it's pretty much flat right here, topography wise. We've got about a little 550, maybe 600 feet in elevation where the camp is. And then it kind of just slopes down slowly towards the river. For, it's about 1700 feet from the cabin down to the river. So we're gonna have a little walk through the old skid trail. We'll get down there and we'll check in, but Cool little landing area, a little field, could be a food plot, uh, maybe something like you know another little RV spot or a yurt, something for some short-term revenue. Um, but anything, you know, cool little field at a minimum. So we're standing on one of the old skid roads here. You can see that it's uh, still in pretty good condition. Four-wheeler, ATV side-by-side -side for sure. Easy walking right now. We got you know, this little kind of fern underbrush stuff is about knee high, so it's not hard to navigate through. Uh, if you spent a little bit of time, you know, just dragging an old box spring or something over this and cleaning it up a little bit, these would be really great uh, either, you know, ATV snowmobile riding trails, walking trails, horse trails, um, just some really fun ways to access the other parts of your property. And uh, this is the road that I decided to take to get down to the river. So pretty accessible to get down to your river frontage as well. Um, just needs a little bit of uh, TLC to have this road looking in really great shape. Alrighty y'all, we made it down to the Little Ossipee River where you have 1800 feet plus or minus, probably a little bit closer to 2000. Uh, the property has not been officially surveyed. There's not pins in the ground and stuff like that, but some of the abutting properties have been surveyed and the river itself is used as a uh, natural boundary as well but as you can see from here especially this over to my right screen left is a 
Really nice little trout hole, um, little swimming area, especially just go and jump in there to cool off if you want. Uh, pretty much the entire river is, is like this. Um, so you know, you'll be able to find swimming holes. You'll be able to do a little bit of fishing, little brookies and stuff like that. You could really make a pretty awesome uh, oasis down here for sure. So but yeah, just to give you kind of an idea of where we are on the property, right on the very kind of south of it here, the, this river is actually the boundary on this south side. So, as you can see, Chile is really approving of it as well. So um, yeah, cool little spot. This is your river frontage. Giddy on up. Alrighty, so when we talk about this property in terms of hunting, you can see what we're dealing with down here. Giant white pine, a lot of nice undergrowth ferns, stuff like that. Great bedding areas down here. The river is right over here as well. Uh, the property is up behind you guys. So we're on the south part of the property here. The river's right behind me, which is that south boundary. You can see as I'm walking on, really nice game trail. There's deer poop fresh, looks like probably this morning right in front of me here. There's tracks everywhere. Pretty solid little area. The hunting is definitely great down here. Some really big deer have been taken off this property from the family. Um, and now that I'm down here in this little portion, I understand why. So we're gonna do a quick little climb back up to where the property level's off. And uh, we'll say goodbye to you guys up there, but. Alrighty folks, that concludes our tour of this beautiful 96 acre camp slash house out here in West Newfield, Maine, York County, 96 acres. We got electric a quarter mile way back here. We got septic, we got a well. So we're in a great central location. We got all the amenities. We're off of a paved, maintained Route 11. We got cell phone service. There's plenty of Wi-Fi satellite stuff out here. We got great views, about 2000 feet of water frontage on the Little Ossipee River. Uh, plenty of hunting, fishing, ATV, snowmobiling happening right here, right on the property. Uh, we have a beautiful RV set up for people and friends to come visit. They can plug into electric water. We have an outdoor full bath for them to be able to use and not worry about coming into the cabin. Uh, just over $2,000 or $2,300 a year in taxes and uh, a really beautiful spot with a lot of potential. Whether uh, We're priced at $450,000. Before you complain about the price and what the property and the cabin is, do your research, because I promise you this is a diamond in the rough waiting for somebody to really take advantage and make this into a, a million dollar property out here. So if you like our video, as always, please like, please comment, please share. Uh, if you haven't already, subscribe to our channel so you get all of our latest properties and updates. And if you're looking for more information on this property or on anything like it, Feel free to reach out to me, Spencer Wood, the real estate cowboy directly, and we will get the job done for you. On that note, let's giddy on up on out of here. Hope everybody had a safe 4th of July and uh, we'll see you on down the road.